Hey everyone, this is Kina. Today I'm bringing you my second build video. This one I'm gonna use my sap tank build as an example of how to build around mechanics instead of just stacking a bunch of stats, stacking damage, or building around one or two OP 5P sets uh, that you want to use. I'm gonna show you some interlocking, interrelating game mechanics, passives, abilities, uh, one set that work together to give me better performance than I would get if I just wanted to use uh, like a tanky five piece or sort of the intuitive tank build that you might just throw together for a sap tank. Uh, I'll illustrate those mechanics and how they work in more or less a machine of interlocking gears that all work together and I'll explain the thought process of how I came upon the build when I first put it together. Okay, so when I'm theory crafting a new build, where do I begin? I begin with a problem. I begin with a question or a series of criteria that I want that build to achieve related to the playstyle. So for this one, I wanted to start with tanking the maximum number of people, mitigating the maximum number or maximum amount of incoming damage. I wanted to heal itself. I wanted to sustain that activity indefinitely. It has to be self-sufficient. The main purpose of this build is to hold aggro, is to take damage. I'm going to be putting out heals over time. You'll see I'll be putting out a few burst heals, a lot of purging. Uh, but mainly it's self-sufficiency, mitigating a ton of damage, um, and sustaining indefinitely. So as a sap tank, how do I do that? I'm on a sword and board bar. I'm a nightblade. I don't have a burst heal native to my class. Where do I get my healing? That's where I started. And I look back to history to find the answer. Back in 1.6, you had a couple of Nightblades running around with like 900 CP, really high max stat builds. They were hitting 30, 35k health, 55k magicka, just disgusting stats, and they were running really high damage, extremely durable sap tank builds. Today I don't have the luxury of being an Emperor all the time, so I'm using the same ability that they did to burst heal back then, which is cleanse. I'm not going to bring the same damage to the table, but I can tank in the same manner. This ability has been used, oh goodness, forever. It's a burst heal that scales off of my max health. It purges debuffs and dots, so an indirect heal over time in that manner, in that I'm getting rid of damage over time and debuffs. And it gives me a little bit of magic uh, regen via support passes, but that's, that's beside the point. Mainly this is my burst heal, and it's on my sword and board bar. You'll notice, I'm a Breton. I think I have 70-something points in CP cost reduction. It still costs 6,541 Magicka. That is extremely expensive. One of the most expensive skills in the game, and I'm going to be crushing on it hardcore. I'm going to be relying really heavily on that heal. How do I fund that? How do I sustain that kind of play? The answer comes in the mechanics of the build. The mechanics that I built around were to acquire enough sustain to fund cleanse spam, sap essence spam, and of course rebuffing as needed. So where did I begin in putting the build together? I began with asking myself what is a list of mechanics. What are mechanics in the game that scale well with the number of people hitting me? With the number of people that I have on me? As far as sustain goes, the first set <laughs> that I came upon for this, the highest magic of sustain set in the game, theoretically, <laughs> is Desert Rose. This was the first set that I brought into the build. It has a really, really low proc chance and a really, really low cooldown, but if you have enough incoming instances of damage to proc it, almost on cooldown, it's a massive amount of magic of sustain. And the 4-piece is really powerful. So, I get a little health, I get some spell resist, I get some magic, that's all great. But this 5-piece, if you have on average like 15 to 20 incoming instances of damage a second, is going to proc this every second. The moment it comes off of that one second cooldown, you'll have like 5 or 10 instances of damage just hit you right off the bat. It's going to proc, it's going to be fueling a huge amount of magic of sustain. So this is the 
core of the build sustain, but it's not nearly enough to sustain cleanse spam. It's not nearly enough to sustain tanking like 20 people. I needed another source, and that's where the real mechanics come in. I went looking through ability passives, uh, knife blade passives, weapon line passives. I was looking for something that I could get more sustain out of, right? I was looking at this, like I could get a lot of regen if I ran Lich and some support stuff on. But I mean, that's not even enough. Regen doesn't scale hard enough. I might be in misform sometimes. I'm a Breton. I don't have, I, I didn't feel like regen would be enough. What I ended up finding is this little passive right here. Restores 540 Magicka when I block a spell on my Resto Bar. This is an often overlooked passive, but it doesn't have an internal cooldown, and 540 Magicka is a lot. This is a really powerful source of sustain if you can sustain uh, blocking on a Resto Bar for a decent amount of time. Now, if I have a lot of incoming damage, I don't have to be on my Resto Bar very long. I just have to block for a few seconds at a time, several seconds at a time sometimes to restore like half of my magic bar or more. It's actually quite powerful. But you don't have any block passives in this skill line. And armor sets that bring block passives aren't the most efficient. So how do I sustain blocking on my resto bar to emphasize or to, to proc absorb very often? The answer, Sword and Mortal. Shield Wall I think is the unmorph name. Shield Discipline is the other morph, it's what I used at first. It makes casting shield and sword abilities uh, free for the seven second duration. This morph is a little more aggressive, it's the one I went to after a while and I was comfortable with the build. Uh, this is going to deter people from hitting you a little bit more, but I found that even though it reflects projectiles, it'll still proc that absorb passive. This is the second mechanic in the chain. If I pop Sword and Bordold, and then I switch to my resto bar. Every single spell that I block with the Sword and Bordal, making blocking free for seven seconds, is gonna give me back 540 Magicka. That's hugely powerful, extremely powerful. So then the question became, okay, I need a lot of Sword and Bordals. I need to be able to use my Sword and Bordal, go to my resto bar, I get a free seven seconds, plenty of time to reapply buffs, restore a bunch of Magicka, and then switch back to my sword and board bar. So, ulties became a source of sustain and of safety, a safe opportunity to reapply my buffs. That's when I added Tava's favor to the build. Get the maximum number of volt back uh, out of any five piece set. There is a list of other sets that I used uh, when I was putting the build together. Shulks is a great one but Tava's is the most ult you can get. Shulks gives you a little bit more damage, better 4-piece by far, but not nearly as much as much ult. Tava's favor, far superior. And then I thought about my 2-pieces. Okay, I need a defensive 2-piece. I'm looking to tank. What 2-piece is best for just tanking the most number of people? I went through Troll King. Well, Troll King gives a flat amount of health regen. That is going to become less effective with each additional enemy hitting you, scratched off the list. Malabeth, stronger individual effect on me, becomes less effective though with each enemy that's also hitting me. It scales down with the number of people hitting you, even though it is still a powerful effect. It's a flat effect, flat healing bonus. My, my hots are only going to be so strong, they're eventually going to be overwhelmed. Uh, it only gives you one extra hot, scratched off the list. Pirate Skeleton is another very powerful effect. This is the most mitigation I can get. However, it also debuffs my healing slightly. And when you transform into a skeleton and out of skeleton form, it also forces your block down and it interrupts ability cast when you use it. After playtesting, I found if I'm high health and I've got my heals going, it makes it very, very difficult for me to get to low health. It mitigates burst really well. However, once I'm bursted to low health, the downside of this, the minor defile, makes it more difficult for me to recover. So yes, I become extremely tanky with the set, but I also become um, susceptible to being executed when I'm low because it's harder for me to recover and heal back up. I scratched that off the list. I, d I didn't really care for it. I ended up settling 
on blood spawn. Raw mitigation, raw uh, mitigation stabs, raw resistances, scales well with the number of people hitting me, gives me ult back. I get more sword and portals to fuel that machine, to power that absorb passive, to give me a bunch of magicka back. It worked really well. I threw this together, at the time this was purple, everything was purple, um, except the blood spawn visage. It has been all along, and it's working beautifully. Okay, so the details. Five Desert Rose back bar and front bar, five Tavas front bar, block cost reduction glyphs on all three jewelry. I want to make that relatively small stamina pool for a PvP tank last as long as I can, because I am trying to permablock. I'm running six heavy and one light with an assortment of ideally sturdy and impen. I have a divines here, I have a divines here, I have a reinforced here, I just don't have a proper helm for this set. I'm running the ritual so the divines aren't so bad, I'm maximizing that healing, however you would mitigate more damage with sturdy or impen than you would get from the bonus healing from one divines. Better to go with those two traits. This is what I could afford, what I could get. I spent probably two and a half million AP getting Desert Rose, got one shield, got one usable sash, it's just what I'm going with. Ideally, sturdier impen. Um, this is a decisive trait, I bought this for 10k, didn't get a single resto staff in all of my containers that I bought. I find decisive to be nice, when I'm on my resto bar, I'm in sort of mortal. I'm blocking. Defending would mitigate a little more damage, sure, but this is giving me more ults after I've used my ult just recently. I find that to be very efficient. It weighs in as yet another component in my machine, fueling my cleanse spam. Gives me more sustain, a little bit extra ult. It's always nice. I do use a defending front bar on my sword, um, and everything else is geared toward mitigation as much as possible. A little extra max stats from 511, not that big of a deal. One more quick detail, you'll notice this is a max health glyph. Cleanse is on my front bar. Cleanse heal scales with max health, therefore I'm going to push that max health up a little bit more with that glyph. I don't really need magicka, that would make my hots a little bit bigger, my damage a little bit higher. Not that important, the burst heal is what matters. I'm never really going to be at max stamina, so I don't really need a tri stat glyph, I don't really want a max stamina glyph either. This is what works best, this is what I'm using, um, and that's what I recommend. So we will go right into abilities. I'll point out this passive here, increased healing for each siphoning ability slotted. I have two. Swallow Soul gives me minor vitality. I don't really cast this that often, just enough to keep that hot up. The hot is important, the DPS is not. Don't waste your magic of casting this. Sap Essence, this is where the money is at. This is a little bit of a burst heal. You get this passive as well, but it procs siphon attacks all day long. Cleanse, that's your, uh, your big burst heal. This is going to purge all debuffs. This is what the entire build is based around using. The entire build is built to sustain using a lot of cleanse, I've explained that. This is what you're going to be casting more often than not. Defensive stance really just here for the blocking buffs. You can cast it sometimes if you have the stamina to spare. We do run a little bit of a low stam pool for a PvP tanking build. Uh, again, so maybe don't cast this too much, but if you have the space, go for it. The other morph of this is Absorb Magic. That's going to consume a projectile, heal you for 15-20% to 20 of your max health depending on healing bonuses. Um, I hit 19% myself with this build. I ended up switching to this morph just because it's more aggressive. However, like I said, I don't find myself casting it very often. I don't find it necessary. Mass Hysteria, such a good ability. More max health from your shadow passive, uh, but mainly you're debuffing everyone's damage around you. You're pushing away the melee damage that's on you and your CC. Ton of utility, great ability, definitely keep that on the front bar. And then Spell Wall. The other morph of this makes casting Sword and Shield abilities free. That's nice. I used to use that. I used to use Absorb Magic. I could just spam this to heal when projectiles were coming at me. But when I'm popping my Sword and Portal, the entire purpose of this build is to switch right to the rest of our. I find, I, or I found in the past that I was casting that Absorb Magic very little. So I remorphed both of those abilities and just did away with that. Now I'm reflecting stuff away, projectiles, magic projectiles that you reflect will still proc absorb. So I'm not actually losing sustain, it's just all around better, it's more aggressive, it's the same sustain. It's what I do, it's what I go for. Okay, so back bar we have siphon attacks. This is your stam sustain. We have a pretty low stam pool 
very high block cost reduction in the build. Uh, keeping this up, using Sap Essence, uh, using Spell Wall as it comes up, this is going to let you perma block. A little bit of Magicka Sustain in the long run, uh, Desert Rose and the Absorb mechanic are both going to exceed this, however, that's where your stamp's coming from, can't drop that. This form, very useful for repositioning in a fight if you don't have a lot of pressure on you. It's going to perch off snares and roots and all that. Yeah, it'll let you get upstairs really quickly, reposition in a tower if that's what you want to do. However, if you have a lot of people bearing down on you, even though you're mitigating all their damage by a ton, you can still take a lot of damage through the duration of the mist. So you'll come out on your rest of bar at like half health or less and get burst. That's very dangerous because you're not healing while you're in this form. So be careful, it can be risky. I find myself not using it terribly often, but when it's useful, like when you're repositioning in a tower or something, it is very strong. Refreshing path, small hot, small irrelevant dot. It's gonna give you your shadow passive for your resistances, um, kinda make a little bit of a house for you. Try to sit on it when you can. The hot is really strong. However, if you get pushed off of it, don't worry too much. Get your spell wall back up. Go rebuff, replace the path, and move on. Rapid regen, really strong hot. If you're rebuffing as frequently as you can with your spell wall, you're gonna have this buff up all the time. Lots of healing, it's gonna share with allies, all of that, great ability all around. Uh, definitely core to the build. Mirage, one of the best defensive abilities in the entire game. Minor resistance buffs are pretty tough to come by, so that's a lot of mitigation you get that, that most tanks don't have access to. Dodge chance, of course, is great. This is what's going to make Tava's work for you. All around, great buff, keep it up. The back bar ult, pretty irrelevant, to be honest. You can run anything. You can run Warhorn, you can run Barrier. Uh, you could run Meteor for a little more damage. Um, I've used Babs quite a bit. But I find that Veil, vale, it, it lasts the longest, it's a huge major protection buff. If you can get it down, I find this to be uh, my preference. It also benefits my allies that I'm with. I use it for my groups uh, more than I use the other alts, but really you can use anything. Another really powerful one, Rest of Alt. Half the cost, way less duration. Same major protection buff to you and to the ally that it hits. This can go off and hit multiple allies sometimes if their health gets low, uh, but you're only going to be buffing them for 5 seconds after the tick that they receive, so it's really not benefiting very many people for very long, but it's got some utility as well. Very powerful one that you can choose from. Tether doesn't really deal damage in this build, but it does stun. You could do another healing debuff with this if you want to help an ally kill someone, but uh, these are all niche options that you can choose from. But Really, my preference is just dropping a veil. You get so much ult back, often you don't need to use spell wall, and you can make it to the veil and get that down, and it's really strong. That's what I try to do. However, if you're taking a lot of heat and tanking a lot of people, spell wall is what you're going to be using more often than not, and the back bar ult is really just for any passives associated with it. In this case, max health. And one more ability I want to cover that you can use when you have an ally with you. Guard will take a lot of heat off of an ally. You have enough side heals going off of you, and enough purges, uh, hots, that you can keep a person up, even if they have a ton of heat on them. If they're either using Pirate Skeleton, that's why I like my Sorks to use, uh, or if they're in heavy armor themselves, you put this on an ally, with all of your healing, it'll keep them up. Very powerful. I take off Misform, I take off Defensive Stance, I find that I need Fear, too much to take it off, so I'll do without the blocking passes for now. Uh, but this guard will keep an ally up through a ton of pressure. Gives you Minor Force, bigger crit heals, gives them Minor Force, bigger crit burst when they go to kill someone, and it creates a very potent duo pair. Um, and it gives this build a lot of group utility, which it can often lack. Uh, I will, on the note of group utility, go through some alternative builds that I've done. I've used Fasalos before. Putting the Fasalos front bar gives you a big health debuff that you can put on people. You do have fewer ults that you can use, translating into less sustain. Still a very strong 5 piece. Uh, brings a ton of utility, a ton of extra tankiness, gives you a lot of health and some extra healing taken. I love this. This is my preference if I'm running with a group of a couple of people. 
against a larger group of enemies where I need to bring more utility, I need to bring more to the table than just some purges, just some hots, and potentially a guard. If I want to bring damage, my favorite set these days is Shulks. Excellent four piece, a little bit more damage than Tava's. Uh, still giving me some ult back, however, it's four and a half times less effective than Tava's, that's what the map works out to, but still a great set. Most damage that I've done on an alternative set, though, is Thunderbug. That proc actually hits pretty hard, it's not bad. If I had a gold weapon sharpened up front, perhaps, it would hit even harder. The four piece, though, excellent four piece. Resistances, spell damage is exactly what you want and then that proc does bring damage to the table. However, this build, I will say, is the least uh, durable, the least sustained that you've got. You're giving up all of your ulti gen and putting it into that proc. That's where your power budget goes to. It's nice, I like it. I notice the lack of sustain. It, since you don't have the absorb proccing as much with more frequent spell walls, I definitely notice the lack of sustain. Gotta play it more carefully. Uh, but a little bit more damage to the table, and it's nice. You could try sets like Heavy Giuliano's, uh, Twilight's Embrace, that kind of thing on your front bar. I would prefer probably the Twilight's Embrace, to be honest. But um, both of those would be good damage sets. You could go with that. I just test tested these because they were drop sets. They were easy, cheap to get, not very expensive. Thunderbug and Shulks. Uh, and the Fasala's debuff was attractive. I don't have crafted Twilight's Embrace or... Um, called Giuliano's Swords, so I didn't end up testing those sets, but, you know, functional as well. The point being, this build functions as it does. It is as strong as it is because of the mechanics that Desert Rose, combining with Spell Wall, combining with the Absorb Resto Passive give you. It lets you, uh, it fuels Cleanse Spam, it fuels that healing, it fuels that durability, you get very tanky, you can sustain forever, you can heal forever, just with Desert Rose, and then cycling spell walls under your resto bar to sustain. Okay, now let's talk about CP. Do green first. Basically, the rule here, 100 points in block cost reduction, a couple points in tumbling, and then dump as much as possible into Magician. You can vary the tumbling and Magician how you want, but remember, you're spamming the most expensive burst deal in the game. Favor Magician. I put a few in tumbling to take the edge off, since I do have a pretty low max stamp pool for a PvP tank. I, I need to be able to break free when I get CC'd, however, putting too many points in here makes your heal more expensive, so that's the trade-off. For this, 100 blasts, I tried not to go too high in Elfborn because my crit chance is like 22% or something. You could go higher in crit damage and way lower in LA Expert, however, I figured that my Swallow Soul scales on my damage, my Sap Essence heal uh, scales with this as well, so I'll just put points in here. It works. These are less important. One point wonders, there, there. It's alright. The rule for red, 100 points, Elemental Defender. You've got Destral now. You've got a ton of incoming Magicka damage in this meta, and since you're trying to perma block, the physical damage you take is typically going to be mitigated by that. However, magic damage AoEs on the ground, magic damage Death Roll everywhere, you're going to want to mitigate that. You cannot block all of those Grothdar. I don't think you can block Grothdar, so you want to have Ellie Defender maxed. Resistant, a few points in here. I don't really run a lot of impen, so that helps. Hardy is the sink, though. Hardy is what I'm trying to push up secondary to Ellie Defender. 20 quick, quick recovery. This is just a really inefficient star. I don't want to go too much higher above this. The diminishing returns get to be pretty stringent, so 20 points, maybe like 25, but I wouldn't go higher than that. And of course, my favorite one point wonder, Expert Defender. That should do it for the CP. So, in short, to summarize the build one more time as a whole, and this interlocking series of mechanics, that work together as a machine to make it successful. We have Desert Rose. This set is an extremely powerful magic and sustain set, but it's not enough. We have this working together with Tava's Favor and Blood Spawn. Those give us a lot of ulti gain, which lets us use Shield Wall very frequently. 
Every time we cast Shield Wall, we have a safe seven seconds where we can switch to our Resto Bar, rebuff, reapply our hots, but crucially, seven seconds of proccing absorb on every magic ability we block. This gives us immense magic in return every time we cast the ult. This uh, ulti gain into shield wall into absorb passive machine plus desert rose give us a massively powerful magicka sustain engine which fuels our other abilities but mainly cleanse spam and the fact that we're able to utilize this extremely expensive but also very powerful ability so well is what makes this build so durable gives it such high healing it has its own purges and it can sustain indefinitely it's what gives it all of its power I have tanked raids and emp groups and guild groups and zerg groups and like anything I've tanked so many people until they have given up and run away with this build I've got one more gameplay clip I want to show you where that happened actually and then probably gonna put some more together for another video another time but for now watch this part of your screen right here for this last clip this is where one of my add-ons displays magicka return procs such as desert rose constitution and crucially absorb I want you to watch just how much absorb procs whenever I pop sword and portal and go to my resto bar so, if you made it this far, enjoy the last clip, pay attention to the details in it. But most of all, this is Kina. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, put together a sap tank of your own, because I'm bringing it back. Go out to Cyrodiil, tank all the things. I'm just gonna tank him. Oh, I did not get that right. Watching this? <laughs> it's pretty good. I don't. Are they ever gonna be able to kill you? How's your sustain? I'm full stem and half magic only because I just used cleanse. I'm not pressured at all. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how long they'll go for. They have to kill me between my ults, and they might get me. They they have the capability. It's just a matter of if they do it right. They truly have the XP ones. This is insane, I can't believe this actually. How are you healing so well? Cleanse. Oh, okay. That actually is a good idea to get all your stand back on or all your magic back on resto bar with the Dude, it's bar. it's fans for me. I think I'm gonna switch back to Stam DK actually. Just a little better off. They gave up. 